Hello everyone and welcome to this review of Ubuntu Mate version 19.10 which is codenamed Aeon Ermin. The focus of this release has been on fixing little issues with the interface, little paper cuts. So generally a bug fixes, making it a more pleasing user interface to use. And an additional focus from the team seems to have been putting as many emojis in the release notes as possible. I've never seen anything like it. What were they thinking? Humour probably. Nah, I reckon it's humour. Or maybe they've made the desktop interface so good that they want to put all the paper cuts in the release notes. That, that could be it actually, you know, we've got to keep the same number of bugs in the release. So yeah, just move them all to release notes instead of the user interface. Anyway, something that's happened in this release of Ubuntu 1910, and it's the same for all the derivatives, is there's been a reduction in the number of 32-bit packages. So it's really only a core selection now, but enough to allow Steam to run. There's a push towards Deb2 to Snap packaging. The application that started with is Chromium, and as with all the other Ubuntu desktops, the styling theming in Ubuntu Mate for Chromium is bad. But I am pleased to say that at least have the theming working in one particular snap, unlike Kubuntu and Zubuntu and Ubuntu itself as well. So actually you can praise them for having it working in one. Uh, that does exclude all the server and terminal applications. I'm just focusing on snaps that are desktop applications. Anyway, let's get on with the review. To start with, we have the Linux kernel version 5.3, Mesa 19.1.6, and the NVIDIA 435 drivers, which are actually included in the ISO file, and you have the option to install them during the system installer. But fortunately, due to some clever rejigging of the other included packages, the overall ISO size has not really increased since previous versions. Base memory usage with nothing much open was 540 meg. So I'm going to start with one of the nice user-friendly features, the welcome screen. And a new feature we have here is the desktop layout. Our desktop layout has always been available in the Mate tweak tool. I can't remember exactly where that is. Actually, I kind of can, but I can't be bothered to look for it. So the Mate tweak tool allows you to choose a different panel layout. So that's the list there. Very boring and not very... Uh, user friendly, so we have the alternate option there in the welcome screen with a nice little picture showing what the desktop will look like and you can get the complete list. Now I know some people will complain about the green theming there, but uh, you can change to different styles. You don't have to keep with the uh, green. Talking about paper cut issues, why is it when I'm doing the recording have you actually failed on me and not during any of the other time I was testing? Yeah, thanks for that, Marte. Anyway, the brisk menu has quit unexpectedly. They've had to continue supporting the brisk menu. Well, it came from the Solus distribution, but uh, I'm not sure where that's going these days. I think it's gone very quiet to uh, almost unsupported now. You get all these different desktop layouts, uh, lots of lovely choice. But the one I like is the Mutant style, the Unity style layout. Now, can you stop messing around with the brisk menu, please? Just just work. And there we are, it works this time. So I don't know what all that was about last time with it uh, being very weird on me, but yeah. You can trust uh, things to break during a live recording. Some other features that we get with this desktop interface is heads up display, a global menu. This really is very similar to what the old Unity desktop was. I have to say I like their efforts. Anyway, this is just one desktop and, and Who's to say that Unity was ever the uh, most popular desktop? Well, those who liked it just kind of kept quiet about it, didn't they? Let's go across to the file manager, the Kaha file manager. I'm trying to think of all the things that have actually changed here. I'm sure the justification of these icons has changed. It just seemed that little bit different to me. If you only had a couple of files listed, well, let's move to just different sizes. And it kind of did, yeah. So it just changed the gap between, made it a justified look instead of like on the left hand side. I'm sure that's a change, but maybe I'm remembering that wrong? I, I, I'm not sure. Let's take a look at a new feature. If you go into properties, you can now get media information. So yes, a free lossless audio codec file, a FLAC file. It shows all the information about it. Perhaps not the most convenient point to get to, but... 
it's a new feature. So can we get the information about the pictures as well? Yes, you can. I can't help but think that would look really nice in an additional panel on Kaha. Kind of like how Dolphin does it. Oops, perhaps I'm making it like Dolphin here. Does this media information work in, let's say, network files as well? No. No, it does not. So presumably it's for local files only. Let's take a look. Yes, it is. So yeah, media information for local files only. Nothing over the network. Go back to the familiar desktop and I'm going to open up a few applications because there's a new feature I want to show you here. We now have some new keyboard shortcuts, the super key and arrow keys. Now uh, push applications to, uh, well, either the left or right hand halves or full screen for up and restore back to windowed view for down. But also you can put them into quadrants by using Alt and Super and left and right and Shift Alt Super and the arrow keys left and right for the bottom quadrants. So yeah, you can now potentially move the applications around just using the keyboard. Let's open up a couple more applications. Now I installed the Snap of Inkscape. I have to say opening speed looks absolutely fine, but also the theming does as well. This is the first Snap of Inkscape that I've seen that is properly themed. Got the correct mouse cursors, got the correct theming on the menus. Well, that's a cause for celebration, a theme that actually looks good in a snap of a desktop application. Less so with GIMP, but at least we've got the correct mouse cursor. Well, I suppose the menu there don't look too bad really in this. It's just kind of a coincidence. It's dark menu and the distribution itself is using a dark menu. Different colored dark backgrounds. But okay, that's not too bad. Chromium though, the snap application we're forced to have instead of a dev package. What is wrong with those mouse cursors? Come on. It's the same problem I got in Zubuntu and Kubuntu. Why do they have to push the snap applications when they can't do the theming correctly? I can certainly appreciate the point though where it's going to save them less effort on packaging. So you're just going to package one application for all the supported versions of Ubuntu. I can see the idea, but you know, it's just not properly implemented. Anyway, I'm certainly impressed with Ubuntu Mate. I know there's not the strive of adding new features into it, but this time around we just got the uh, Paper cuts, the bug fixes, improvements on the high definition displays. See, that's something I can't necessarily appreciate with only a 1080p monitor. You've got different options of having a heads up display, dock. Actually, I haven't shown you the heads up display, have I? There we go, we've got a heads up display, and well, you can start typing to search for things, new or preferences. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a pointless one to use when I've got such a small menu, but. Uh, for things like Inkscape and GIMP, that'll uh, definitely be more of a useful feature to have. And it's a feature that actually worked properly between the GTK and Qt based applications. So yeah, good effort there from the Ubuntu Mate team. With all the excitement there on a new feature of the desktop layout, I didn't really show any of the other features on the welcome screen. So you do have a browser selection. Nice option if you want to get a different browser. The Mate shop if you want to help uh, fund the development of the project. Links to getting involved, the software. This is kind of a basic software manager. Uh, yeah, it's far from being a fully complete software manager, but you do get some uh, basic choices on the uh, applications. I'm trying to think of something to go for, say internet. Yeah, it's just a, a short list of uh, useful applications you could have. And if you want the full list, there's, uh, I think they allow, they give you the option of installing uh, like GNOME software and uh, yeah, other software. Yeah, the GNOME Software Center or Synaptic. And of course you can use the command line apt or apt get. They've got chat room, community, so links to the social networks, getting started, so customization, keyboard shortcuts, that's, it's a good thing to have this, even if you're just going to link to existing applications. Yeah. Why not? It gives a new user somewhere to start. And yeah, you've got the introduction about it. So that's, uh, That was a look at the welcome screen. We'll finish off with a look at the applications. So it's a bit of an assortment there under accessories. Nothing too bad. Administration, nothing too much. 
I installed GIMP and Inkscape for a bit of testing. Firefox is the browser of choice. I installed Chromium for a bit of testing. Got the partial suite of LibreOffice. Sound and video, GNOME MPV has replaced VLC. And I installed VLC for a bit of testing. This was the snap of VLC. A bit slow to start and looks pretty bad on the theming. The system tools, so system monitor. Memory usage has crept up, but uh, yeah, it's not overly bad. It's still running nice and fast. And that is it. So that was a look at Ubuntu Mate version 19.10. I actually reckon this is the best official Ubuntu derivative for new users. It's got that really nice feature of the welcome screen. It's actually a really flexible desktop environment. You've got quite a few different desktop options just built in. I think it has that ability to cater for a variety of users. Oh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.